Begin self-publishing, episode number 17, mailing lists. Interested in self-publishing but don't know where to start? Want to get your book onto Amazon? Want to hold your paperback book in your hands? Learn how on the Begin Self-Publishing podcast with your host, Tim Lewis. I've mentioned mailing list services such as MailChimp and Aweber in previous shows, but it occurred to me when I was struggling with my own mailing list last night, maybe I should do a dedicated show about mailing lists. It's one of those things where I kind of assume that everybody knows what a mailing list is. It's actually usually an email list rather than a mailing list. While it is possible, of course, to create a mailing list of actual physical mail addresses of readers and other people. For most intents and purposes, actually, the only practical list you can build is an email list. There are several services out there available for storing lists of email addresses, people who sign up. Unless you've been living under an internet rock, you will have seen quite a few of these on your various journeys around the web. Get this free ebook if you sign up with your email address. They usually involve a little form that says either first name, email address. Sometimes you get multiple lines of information asked, usually on the promise of some free reward. I did this in my last show where I added a a page to my website where you could download a, a free guide to EPUB formatting you signed up with your email address. Unfortunately, as I discovered last night, I'd managed to screw this up so that the form didn't actually work properly. I use a service called MailChimp. I've used another service called Aweber, which is also quite good. I switched over to MailChimp because it's slightly more powerful than what it can do. Though even these services are very good. I think Aweber probably has better support than MailChimp. But MailChimp has more functionality from what I can tell if you actually pay for it. MailChimp does actually have a free version where up to a fairly small number of subscribers you can get you can get a limited version of the MailChimp product which will collect emails. This will actually work for an awful lot of authors and other people. It's not a bad place to start. So going back to what a mailing list actually is, it's a collection of email addresses which you can then send a, a dedicated email to everybody on that list all at once. Most of the services have the option of taking the person's first name, which they captured on that little form, and replacing it on the uh, emails that are sent out. So rather than just seeing a blank, dear sir, stroke madam, you see, dear Tim, or dear John, or dear whatever. This is why people ask for the first name when they've got those sign-up forms. Most of these services make it quite straightforward and they've got little online interfaces so that you can actually create emails that go out and put nice formatting and all the rest of it on them. It's very tempting to think that you could do something like this yourself. And there are services that literally just send out emails. The problem with using one of these, rather than a more dedicated service such as MailChimp or Aweber, is there actually is a lot more involved in sending out large email blasts than you'd think. Biggest problem being spam. If one of the big email providers, such as Outlook or Gmail, sees a particular computer on the internet sending out hundreds of emails, and they get complaints by some people about those emails, then it's possible for that server to be blacklisted and nobody and not be able to send any decent amount of emails out again. This is not a problem that you want to face if you're trying to send out a regular email to people who follow following you, following you on an email list. So be very careful about people who say they can t- give you a much cheaper alternative than these other sites. And there are an awful lot of competitors in this space. Some of them, like Infusionsoft, do an awful lot more in terms of automation than services like Aweber and MailChimp will do. But I'll come on to what automation is in a minute. So typically the way that a mailing list will work is you put a, you can put a form on your website or you can even actually get a, click, 
a collection of email lists from ones that people have written down and add them in manually. Most of the better email services to try and make sure that they don't get marked as spam sites use a double opt-in approach. This isn't actually necessary and some of them will give you the option to switch either one way or the other. But the, the way the world seems to be going is that it wants to go to a double opt-in approach. A double opt-in is where when you sign up for an email list on a website it will not add you onto that list until you've clicked a link in an email that's sent to you. This is to stop people from just signing any old body up to an email list. So there'll be nothing to say, stop me signing up Barack Obama's presidential email address to one of these sites that doesn't have, doesn't have a double opt-in. But if I do that on a double opt-in email list, and he'll get an email and he'll just ignore it, and nothing will happen. So this does cut down on spam quite considerably, and the perception of the service being spam. There's another reason why double opt-in is quite good, even if it does lose people along the way, which is the criticism of it. A lot of people won't notice necessarily that they need to click a link on an email that they receive, so you will, won't get as many of the people who actually click through your site subscribing as maybe you would if you didn't have double opt-in. The other reason why double opt-in is becoming more important is that certain countries such as Canada have introduced rules to make it mandatory that they actually have to, their citizens have to have double opt-in. My understanding is that the rules don't take legal effect until 2017, but it's still this is the way things are going. If you ever hope to have readers or subscribers in Canada, you better start considering using a double opt-in service in the next year or so. So what is this automation thing that I'm talking about? An awful lot of people who set up email lists never ever use any of the automation features whatsoever. The very simplest one, which is usually available whatever the mailing service is, is to be able to send an email automatically when somebody signs up for an email list. This is tremendously useful if you want to include a link to something, say a free download, or some free bit of information that you've promised people for sending up to the email list. This is a very simplest case of what's called an autoresponder. An autoresponder is something that happens when somebody does something. And this is a very specialised form of what's called automation in MailChimp and some other services. What you can do with an autoresponder sequence is say, this person has signed up for my email list, so send him this email, then send him this email a week later, and send him this email a week later, and so on. Those, gap, those time gaps can be anything you like. You can send one every day, send one one day and then a week the next day. And in this way, it means that as somebody running the email list, you don't have to be sending out emails all the time to people. And you can take them everybody along a path separately. Some of the more advanced automation features available on some, some services mean that you can do things like send out emails to people who visit particular pages on your website who are on your email list. So if you see that somebody on your email list visited your page about your book that you've just introduced, and you can send them an email, and just people who visited that page an email from your email list. There's all sorts of other special process kind of things that you can do with more advanced systems like Infusionsoft, where if people click on this link on this particular email and send them down a little different chain of email, automatic emails than on another one. For most authors, this level of control isn't really necessary. You're listening to the Begin Self-Publishing Podcast with Tim Lewis. And there is some debate as to how frequently, if at all, you should email your list. In the past, I've emailed a list every week. I didn't find this particularly effective for the amount of work it involved. Now I've tended to move towards creating an autoresponder sequence. At the, as a one-time productivity thing and then just sending infrequent emails when and if something's actually happening. In this way, the new subscribers are reminded that you actually exist by getting the autoresponder sequence. The longer-term listeners only get to 
hear about things when you've actually got something to say or give away or, or do or promote in some way. One of the things I've started doing in my autoresponder sequences is adding in a, an email asking people to reply if they've got any comments about the service. The reason why you want people to reply to your email is that in certain services, your emails will get shunted off into some subfolder. For example, on Gmail, there's a promotions folder where your email will get shunted off unless it seem, unless it get the impression you're a friend or in some way connected with that person. If they've replied to your email, and this flags up to a lot of email systems, you actually should go into the main email section. This is why this is a new trick that a lot of people have introduced to try and get people more involved with their emails. We've all got those sort of semi-spammy emails that we never really read, and they end up quite efficiently usually by Outlook and Gmail being filtered off somewhere else. So when you're on the other side of the fence, you want people to be interacting with your emails. The obvious way is to make them good and make the stuff that's given away good in the emails. Make them very, very good quality. From a commercial point of view, the reason why email lists are so attractive to people like authors and online business people in general it gives you a way of storing up some potential buyers for the point where you want to release something. I talked about this in my marketing show. But this is why people say, build up an email list. Do all you can to build up an email list of readers. And I think this is something that will stay as being effective almost indefinitely. Email isn't great. and Not everybody will open your emails. But if you've got 200 people you can email when your new book comes out, you can be sure that a proportion of them will go and actually buy your book around the time when you email them. As discussed before, in websites like Amazon and Apple, this is great for pushing you up into a chart. This gives exposure to your book and then other people will see it. And from there you kind of go on the path to being a best or at least a reasonable selling book. If you have no email list and you release a book to Amazon and you've done no real promotion for it, then it will just sit selling nothing almost indefinitely. Something I've realised, which is kind of obvious and I've only just started moving into, is to build up an email list you need to give stuff away. Very few people are going to give up their email unless you've got something to give them. And this is really quite reasonable. So if you're going to be an author, you need to think about free novellas and other things that you want to write and just so that you can give them away. You can try the approach of giving away free chapters to your book to people who sign up. Though I'm not sure how effective this will be. For me, it does seem that the actual level of giveaways that you need to do now to actually get lots of email subscribers is, is going up as everybody knows that they need to do this. This is one of the things that people complain about, the deluge of free books and stuff available. It all makes sense. They're not free because they're being given away for, a, for an email address. If you are a starting out author and you want to think maybe that you should, at least at every book you do, give a opportunity for people to sign up to some kind of email list or service at the back of the book this way you can get get a list of people who already liked a previous book you've written so there's a good chance they'll like the next book you write so it also gives you a pool of people who could possibly be given review copies of the book again for building up reviews you can see how this kind of general cycle of building up followers and lists is the way to go in online business this is true on any service, but building up an email list is a great way of doing this. Probably more important than building up Facebook followers or Twitter followers or even any social media followers. So if you haven't got an email list started, have a look at a service such as MailChimp or Aweber. Maybe just go with the MailChimp free service to begin with and see if you can build up a list, even if it's only a few people, and get going. MailChimp can be a bit temperamental to set up. That's all for this week. 
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please stop by iTunes and rate and leave a review. This helps make the show more visible. For free resources, show notes, and other helpful content, join the community at BeginSelfPublishing.com. 